dangerous of war destroys righteous deeds in the is the tongue through indecent speech backbiting slandering false witnessing and the like such things nullify good deeds the righteous deeds would go with the oppressed one you have spoken ill about or against in the sense that they will take revenge on the day of recompense from your good deeds making you become bankrupt this is because they will take them in exchange for their being treated unfairly so if you want your good deeds to remain for you restrain your tongue from evil speech it is very dangerous his saying so i said O oh, Allah's Prophet, will we be held responsible for what we say? Muad was surprised because t talking to is easy for people. Their tongues are regularly busy talking. So does this have effect on the deeds of a person? And will he be held responsible for it? Then the Prophet said, may your mother be bereaved of you it does not mean may your mother lose you although this is originally a supplication for destruction it is from the from those words that are uttered though whose whose apparent meanings are not intended therefore the prophet saying may your mother be bereaved of you does not mean that he was cursing Muad to be destroyed it is just an expression that uh, is uttered or whose implications are not intended. Are the people turned upside down on their faces? Or, he said, on their noses? In the fire, except by the consequences of their tongues. This shows the danger of the, peep, of the tongue and speech. A person may utter shirk and disbelief and go out of the fold of Islam. He may abuse the religion, abuse the messenger, and abuse the messenger and make a jest of the religion and renegade from the religion of Islam. He may utter a statement of disbelief, lied upon the tongue, but it will render his good deeds useless and he may become a disbeliever he may backbite and slander both of which are among the major sins he may even give false witness which is grave and severe likewise he may swear and regularly make oaths some of which are false oaths that throw the individual into the fire all these are aspects of e of speech but if you use this tongue for good speech it would bear you fruits for instance the tasbi al tahli al takbir recitation of the quran and remembrance of allah but if you use it in evil speech, it will destroy you and throw you into the fire without you knowing. A person may observe the late night prayer, fast and do righteous deeds, but would sit and backbite the, backbite the people, speaking evil if of them and his righteous deeds waste away thereby he either obli obliterates them by uttering a statement of disbelief shirk mockery and jest about the religion or nullifies them when those he treated unjustly would take them from him on the day of resurrection consequent upon the harvest of his tongue the tongue is very dangerous therefore the prophet warned about it So the Muslim should be cautious of making utterings. He should only say the truth. He should only make speeches that are needed, beneficial to his religion and worldly life. He should avoid excessive talk.
from which he does not gain anything, not to mention the forbidden, and indecent speech, which is certainly worse and more dangerous to the tongue. His saying collected, he is one of the four compilers of the four books of Sunnan. Sunnan. These books are called the four books of Sunnan. Is the famous Imam from among the students of Imam Ahmad, and from those who acquired knowledge from Imam Ahmad and Imam Al Bakhari. He is a noble Imam and a well known scholar of Hadith. He was blind, may Allah have mercy on him. His saying, he said, a has how could it be Hassan or Ansai? A Hassan Hadith is less in grade than a Sai Hadith because hadith, a hadith had grades. Then Hassan, then weak, then weak. These are the grades of a hadith. So his saying, a Hassan Sai Hadith, is a terminology specific to our activity. The scholars say it means Hassan from one root and Sai from another path. So he recorded it from two paths, uh, a Sai path. that fulfills the conditions of, of authenticity and a Hassan path, which refers to a hadith whereby the position of the reporter is light compared to that of reporter of a Sai hadith, so it would be considered Hassan. But in the case of a Sai hadith, the reporter has a perfect position. This is one of the conditions of a Sai hadith, but if his position is light compared to that of a of reporter of a Sahih Hadith, while he, the remaining conditions are fulfilled, it is then a Hassan Hadith. It cannot be considered a weak Hadith, it is rather a Hassan Hadith between Sahih and weak. This terminology is peculiar to our termity, but the scholars of Hadith before him classify it into to either Sahih or Hassan.